It goes back to the core principles of why public libraries exist. The right to know, freedom of access to information, freedom of expression, equity of opportunity and access, the right to participate fully in a democratic society, and ensuring that people have the skills they need and are assisted in to learn those skills. In my view, all of these things add up to the rights of a citizen. E-government, both e-local government and e-central government is now the norm and on track to achieve high percentages of interaction online over time. Probably not as fast as you would like, but we're on track. The degree of self-help information seeking is also now growing rapidly. Things that were complex are now really easy, uh, like finding legislation using keyword search or finding contact details. And interactive participative democracy online is extensive and encouraged, and levels of participation are probably much higher now through submissions, surveys, feedback, requests for service, discussion forums, social media, all supported, of course, uh, through libraries. All of this is good for local and central government, I think, and certainly good for citizens to be able to exert more direct influence. E-government assumes access to a device. It assumes a degree of digital literacy skill and confidence. It assumes awareness of what is going on. It assumes that people will participate online. It assumes that the virtual world is sufficient and that local face-to-face -face is no longer required. It assumes that people own telephones. It assumes that people can afford telecommunications costs. And the worlds of education, commerce, entertainment and particularly employment um, assume the same. So these days you look for jobs online, you apply online, you provide CVs and references in PDF online, you have to be contactable by email. If you want to come along to a free tutorial, you register online. When those assumptions are wrong, then gaps occur with the very real risk that people are excluded. And this is where libraries have a key role to play, I believe, based on that fundamental premise of ensuring equity of access and opportunity, plus our innate customer service response of helpfulness and kindness, to quote Nigel Latter from his Monday keynote at the Lianza conference, and also, I think, our skill in identifying and knitting many threads together. as e-government places ever bigger demands on people and hence on libraries. In New South Wales, uh, the then Roads and Traffic Authority uh, decided that they didn't want to or couldn't afford to uh, print driver licensing materials anymore. So a lot of people descended on public libraries to find that information and the public library staff assisted them mightily. But it was another thing they had to do. And I think we should welcome doing those things but recognise that they do have a cost to them. And we're seeing that coming from all levels of government. We're seeing it come from private companies, the big employers of young people, the uh, fast food uh, places, the big supermarkets, they require people to apply for jobs online. Centrelink requires people to report online. Many of those um, demands end up in the public libraries. And behind them all are the challenges of literacy and particularly digital literacy. We cede power to government and we cede it in ways that we expect to reflect our expectations as citizens. And we cede that power because in a civilised society we expect rules, we expect people to behave in particular ways, we expect standards to be upheld, we expect our fellow citizens to behave in particular ways. 
and, and we cede some of that authority to government to help govern us and look after us. We've been doing quite a lot of research on what constitutes a, a, a quality government service in a, digital, in, in a digital environment. And it's very clear from that research that citizens want services built around their needs. They want, to, they want to achieve something in their own lives when they're dealing with government. They don't deal with government because they want to. Now, I know that's pretty obvious. People don't actually want to have a passport just to have a passport. They want a passport so they can travel. I know that's obvious, but sometimes we just kind of forget those obvious things. They, they, you know, they don't want to do a police check. They want to successfully get a job. All of those things are interactions with government, so they want them easy. They want them part of the process. They don't want it to be a separate thing. So fundamentally, they want to be able to transact with the government when they need to on their terms based around the events that are happening in their lives. And they're very much searching for ways to make their life admin more and more straightforward. We need to make sure that as we encourage the uptake of technology, that we develop the rule of law and societal expectations about the use of that technology to ensure that it is that great democratisation tool. As part of our education programs, soon to be released for women and uh, families in situations with domestic violence, we will increasingly be glass half full people showing how to use technology rather than run away from it. I think the great loss would be if women uh, if children, uh, if any person that is uh, marginalised in society can't use this technology, then it is no longer that democratisation tool. In fact, it's a tool for oppression. I don't know how fast the world of digital content and online engagement with governments, central and local, will evolve or what proportion of citizens will be able to participate easily and confidently in that virtual world. But what I foresee for libraries as their role in digital citizenship in future is ensuring provision of access to objective information, assistance to access information, skills building, building a sense of identity and belonging and cultural awareness, and provision of a place, both physical and virtual, where connection, debate, participation, and information sharing can take place. All of these things confirm the fundamental role of a library as the agora, the forum, which is at the heart of democracy. Kia ora. <laughs>